What is up, guys? It's the Sound Alchemist here with Gershwan. And today we're back at it, answering more of your questions in another for the greater. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put a question in front of your question because we get those questions first. And that is word for word exactly what none other than Microsoft Word technical support did. The question asked here is why the hell is all this stuff around the orcs so goddamn goofy? Apart from the Imperium, and Chaos, I guess, and fine, the Tyranids and the Necrons and the Dark Eldar, they would seem to be the most naturally grim dark And interesting. The way that the genetic mapping would express itself is super interesting, but instead, they make the orcs basically clowns, with speech affects that literally make no sense. Why is this, good sirs? I believe they were supposed to mock Nazis. Because, like, the original 40k orcs um, had the Nazi helmets, and they would walk around, or, like, they were depicted as, like, marching. They had the bands around their, um, what is it called, their arms. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is what the original um, aesthetic of the orcs was supposed to portray. Kind of. Like, not entirely. Um, but, um, yeah. So you're, they were supposed to be, like, the Hun. Like the, like, yeah, post-war or war, because it had to be post-war, but, um, yeah, like that whole concept of, like, these are the other, they are the bad guys, mm -hmm. and they're also really stupid. Yeah, and um, the other day I posted a picture of the new models for Age of Sigmar, um, what are they called again? I can't remember. Yeah. It's they're like, yeah, <laughs> they're pretty badass. <laughs> they look really amazing. Like, I, I, I made a community post saying that this is what grim dark orcs should be yeah and uh in the comment section um bacon and eggs did a really good response um that actually answers your question so i'm just going to read that out loud and hopefully you guys can comment and get you know your opinion there so bacon and eggs says 40k orcs are like clockwork orange gentlemen literally on steroids and once you stop to think about it for just a single second you realize that orcs in 40k literally find murder funny it's a 250 plus kilogram dude laughing at any violence, loud, hearty, belly laughter. And the fact that we find it and the antics surrounding it hilarious just adds to the madness of it all. The true jovial nature of the 40k orc relationship with Highness Slaughter is never explored because they are so goofy. But I would argue that the edgy nature of many other factions make them tryhards compared to the orcs. Um, basically, all other factions had to lose sanity and gain compassion or gain enlightenment to become monsters. Um, comparatively, the orcs never had a shred of compassion to begin with. And unlike Tyranids, they share culture with humanity, literally learning to assimilate and copy human culture by proximity, that so many of us can find a sense of camaraderie and joy from something so similar and yet so fundamentally antithetical to human existence is terrifying. They are like us in so many ways, and yet we tend to forget they really are not like us at all. A window into the mind of those never seen to begin with. Yeah, that's actually a really good uh, concept. Um, that probably came like later, though, um, because of that concept. Like, there's a difference between the the violence, the the humor to the violence that you're talking about, because like you also see it in Dawn of War. Like in one of the trailers, you see an orc just walking around, and he grabs a Space Marine's arm and just poosh, rips it off, and just keeps walking like nothing. Uh, and it's like that concept of like you said, like they don't see violence like we see violence. Uh, they are just naturally that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, originally though they were slapstick definitely yeah yeah like when they were first introduced yeah yeah but that's a really good concept and it also almost makes me think of like all the villain movies that are coming out now with like cruella and um the joker and stuff like that and how we love the joker because he is that like abandonment of of sanity so i wonder like we're over here thinking like, like the tyranids are the true aliens because they are like the hive mind, but no, maybe the orcs are the true aliens. Uh, yeah, it's a good, good, good response. Yeah, let us know down below what you think about this. Um, and they're called cruel boys for Age of Sigmar. Oh, 
Oh, the cool thing about the Cruel Boys is that the original orcs from Tolkien, um, they're supposed to be mutated uh, elves. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get that vibe with these. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. With these models. Um, I always thought that orcs were like. They almost appeared like mutated um, dwarves to me. The 40K ones, anyways. Um, because they're more like built stockier. Uh, whereas these models are slim and they look kind of yeah like the one riding hungry. that thing just it just I like the aesthetic so yeah. much almost to the point of hey maybe I'm gonna start orcs it's annoying that Age of Sigmar gets grim dark stuff <laughs> and 40k gets fucking space marines yeah Ugh. literally Age of Sigmar gets everything we want in 40k people are saying give us slanesh models Age of Sigmar has that it's like people are saying make the game more competitive. And make uh give the make the rules free. Age of Sigmar has that. <laughs> yep. But huh. we'll see. Because all GW hears is what more Space Marine stuff for sure. <laughs> that is partly our fault though because we buy it. Yeah. But that's because Space Marine stuff is so good. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, this next person is excuse me, and his question is how to get over a bad breakup. Um, that's uh, it? Yeah, that's... How do you get over a bad breakup? <laughs> okay, uh, will you find someone else? Uh, this guy in the replies said, uh, Kit Bash, your next ideal person. Yeah. I think it's really important that, like, if you experience... I think everybody should experience a big breakup. Well, they shouldn't, but, like... <laughs> if you experience a big breakup, it, it, it builds you... It builds the character that you're gonna be. A little bit more uh, depending on like at what time this breakup comes the earlier uh, you get your heart broken I think the better um, but when you do suffer through a big big breakup I think the thing that you should do is like think about the next person and um, think of the qualities that you want in that person we have a friend that's always joking around about like that kind of stuff mm-hmm. and, and th- he, he jokes around but i mean there's always some truth to that and i think the, i think the truth lies in the fact that the next person that you look for better be into the hobbies that you're into mm-hmm. better be in like, better think the way that you think not a hundred percent obviously um but like in the same ballpark right if you don't believe in god and then this person is going <laughs> to church something's wrong there kind of um, but it, it's also up to you guys to, to find that line of like, at what what point is it like? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because I mean, it's just, but <laughs> make sure that your, what is it called? Rebound. Make sure that your rebound is uh, thick. Really, really thick. Yeah. Just uh, like the previous For the Greater Wall, we had a person ask us, what's the anatomy? of uh 40k characters and stuff like that and then he said like boobs on eldar and tau just ignore that whole first part and just go to the second part yeah don't ask yourself hmm what anatomy will this next person have no just go like where are the thick ones yeah (laughs) go for them bbws know what you want and um don't settle for less well yeah (laughs) (laughs) i I don't know (laughs) you're asking advice from People who play 40k, right? Mm-hmm. You're you're what you should do is just play more 40k. Yeah, that, that's that's the only advice we can give you. This question comes from T Swim 92. Are orc mercenaries still a thing? And if so, does the Imperium still use them? Uh, yeah, they're freebooters. Um, so the Imperium is not supposed to use them. Uh, rogue traders will sometimes use them, or like desperate human traders mm-hmm. that are not rogue traders would use them. Um, but it's never a good idea. Orcs will kill you. Yeah. They'll double cross you. Mm-hmm. So, quick question. Orc society uses teeth as currency. Yeah. Is, are orc teeth the only thing worth anything, or will they kill, like, a human and use those teeth as, like, money? No, it's, so, it's only orc teeth. Mm. Not Gretchen or squigs? No. Grots? Nope. Squigots? Squigots. You could trade that for, like, teeth or other things, like a traditional trade of, like, I have this shooty gun. I'll trade you it for that squigoth over there. Um, that, yeah. But, like, teeth, teeth, it's only orc teeth. Mm. Or so the lore says. Next question. 
Uh, this next one is uh, <laughs> an interesting one. Uh, Brian B., what happened to the room you originally did the greater walls in? It's I mean, a mess. <laughs> yeah, what happens to any room? Yeah, it's just a mess, and I don't want to go in there anymore. <laughs> it's like, it's almost like that dark area in like, like, like when Simba and, and Mufasa, when he's like looking over it, he's like, this is all your kingdom, except that. That's yeah. that's how it is. Hey, don't go over there. There's hyenas there. Mm-hmm. There's thumbtacks on the ground. <laughs> thumbtacks. I, I dropped a pot of known oil, and every time I look at it, it hurts. Yeah. So it's because it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Next question. Uh, this one's by Evangelium, or Gellium, something like that, Ium. Why not just make some current Grey Knights cross the Rubicon and become Primaris? I'm sure new models in a codex would sell. Uh, so your question came out before the announcement that Thousand Sons and Grey Knights will be getting their codex after the Orcs and the Sisters of Battle. I'm a little confused because they also announced the Admech stuff, but is that already coming out? Yeah, I think it already came out. Oh, that's right. Pre-orders came out. Yeah. This weekend. So Admex is out. I believe Oryx is next. Then Sisters of Battle. Then Thousand Suns. Then the uh, Grey Knights. So we've got uh, two months <laughs> uh, for it to come out. Yeah, but they're not going to be Primaris, right? As far as I know, they're just regular Grey Knights just bumped up to Ninth Edition rules. Um, the thing is, we have talked about the creation of a Primaris Grey Knight. Um, I don't. I. I would. I want that to happen because the models would look cooler, um, more true to scale. They'll still have all the iconography and symbols of like the, like the religious. Almost. Yeah. I guess you could call it kind of religious annotations of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if it'll actually happen because there's such an elite specified type of space marine that they might just stay that way. Yeah. Um, they're still step space marine, so they could still undergo the process. But I think just losing a single Grey Knight in the Rubicon process, because you do have to die and come back in order to cross the Rubicon, might be too much of a blow that the Grey Knights may not want that to happen. Right. Um, But still, I I want true scale Grey Knights regardless. Yep. Lore-wise, yeah, I I think it's it's difficult uh, because of the whole fact that there's the gene seed of the Emperor. Emperor. Yeah. Uh, And Belisarius Call obviously didn't have that. Or maybe um, he does. Eh? You never uh, know. Yeah, I mean, GW can always say that. Mm-hmm. But also, I think that GW put a bunch of time and effort into um, the new models that came out for Primaris Marines. In order to do that with a completely new chapter uh, and not just do like what they did with the Blood Angels, where it's like, oh, the shoulder plate is the only thing that's going to change. <laughs> yeah. It's going to, it's difficult. Um, right, because you can't just color these guys gray and call them gray knights. They, they, they have unique weapons. Um, Terminator armor, Terminator armor, that kind of thing. So they they would literally have to make new sculpts, than just rehashing the same uh, intercessor model just with a different paint job. And there lies the f- like flaw with a lot of GW's like business model, is like they know their bread and butter are Space Marines, and then they create these offshoots. So you have people who play these exclusively, like the Grey Knights. They're not going to get updated in the same manner that the main one is, even though they feel like they should, because mm-hmm. they're Imperium. Right. But yeah. uh, we answered the question, right? Yeah. This next one comes from the big one. What happens to the th- What happened to the third member of One Mind Syndicate who was in early videos? Uh, last I know, he was doing fine, working. Um, I don't think he. I think he got into video games. I don't think he does anything like he used to play Hero Clicks, but I don't think he plays Hero Clicks anymore. Um, I know he's into crypto, <laughs> <laughs> but he's really into Dogecoin, I think. So yeah, he's doing all right. He's okay. Oh, uh, this one's by Dragon Punch Nine O Three Nine O Three. Why do I keep getting State Farm ads before your videos? That has nothing to do with Forty K. Let's do with you. Mm-hmm. So I think the way the YouTube works, because whenever I look up um, any video, it doesn't have to be our video, uh, I always get the Sasquatch soap <laughs> oh, thing. Yeah. Uh, and that's because when you buy ads off of Google, um, like if you're the company and you're trying to s- sell your ad, what you do is you have a, um, a demographic that you're targeting. So it really depends on like whether you hit their criteria. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so you must be of the age bracket where insurance is important, which is pretty much all of them. Yeah. But yeah. And uh, this next one is also by Dragon Punch 903. Did the Bing Bang start the universe in 40K, or was it just the creation of Slanesh? Oh, I get it. It was the Big Bang. Ah. The Big Party started <laughs> the thing of Slanesh. Um, no, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, because, I mean, 40K is essentially our reality. Right. Just progressed through the future. Yeah, so if we believe the Bing Bang started this galaxy, this universe, then yeah. Right? The beginning of the universe, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not Slanesh, though. Right. That was the Eldar. The Eldar doing their thing. Next question. This one's by Logan Douglas. Are there any chaos worshipping Drukari? And do they... Or do any of their actions feed the chaos gods? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, when it comes to the Drukari, I don't think they would worship chaos. Because, I mean, they're still trying to uh, protect themselves from she who thirsts, Slanesh. Um, and it's weird because like every living being kind of does feed the chaos gods whether it's intentional or not uh, just by being mad sick, sick, feeling pleasure uh, thinking and that's already feeding all the gods yep now if you're like a super strong psyker and you're like actually doing it as like a form of worship, worship then yeah that feeds them much more um, but yeah, it's, it's it's something that happens almost involuntarily. Yep. Next question comes from Kin Kin <laughs> Kiani. <laughs> to both of you, which part of the Imperial Guard would you like to be if you had to choose? Which regiment or vehicle? Hmm. I think I've always liked the um, Vostrian Vostrian for firstborn. Mm-hmm. Um. They just have cool uniforms. Yeah. They got the little hat that goes up. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. I was going to say the, uh, the the Krieg, but I mean, that's a really bad place to be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you die when you're like in your early 20s. Yeah, you're probably a clone too. Or not a clone, but like vat born. Which one would it be then? Uh, maybe Katachan. Katachan would be cool because you're just tough. Yeah. Uh, what vehicle would you like to ride in or what kind of thing would you like to Sentinels are pretty cool because they're like those uh, AT-ATs from like Star Wars. Yeah. I agree, I agree. I think I would want to be have one of those big guns because hmm. I just like the miniature. The miniature looks really <laughs> badass. Yep. Speaking of which, what vehicle in all of 40K would you like to pilot? Hmm... I think it has to be something badass like a, a Titan. Because I was going to say like a DACA jet, but that's just a regular <laughs> jet. I can do that like if I really put my mind to it. <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because I said Sentinel, but then I immediately thought of the, what is it, Dragoons from the AdMech? Yeah. But that's the same thing. It just looks cooler. Yeah, you don't have <laughs> the protective <laughs> don't have the thing around yeah. you. Um, well, the um, Onager Doom Crawlers would be kind of cool. Mm-hmm. You're encased in that, like, goop. Yeah. They wouldn't just be, like, your hand. It'd be all of you. You do have to be lobotomized, though, which is not cool. <laughs> but you're piloting what you want to pilot. Yeah. Oh, or what about an Imperial tight or Imperial Knight? That'd be pretty cool, yeah. You'd be a prince up, and you go on the, what is it called? The Throne Mechanicum? Mm-hmm. Neuralinked. That'd be really cool. Um, a Hammerhead would be cool from the Tau Empire. Yeah, because essentially you become the vehicle. Um, it's almost like a like uh, like Gundam or some like anime thing where like you get hooked up and like your body instead of like when you move your body it moves the vehicle and stuff like that. Yeah, that would be dope. And you get one of the strongest weapons in all of 40k. The railgun. The railgun, which they nerfed, so it's probably not that any good anymore. <laughs> is t- is a centurion technically a vehicle? It's like an armor that you put over your armor. Yeah. What was armor vehicle and not right? <laughs> I don't know. Because I was going to say battle suit, but I don't think that's a vehicle. No, yeah. Because it is a suit of armor, really. A piranha would be fun. Mm-hmm. A skimmer. Mm-hmm. A Tyranid just go inside the Tyranid. Kind of like in that, or the movie with uh, Ace Ventura Pet Detective when it goes inside the rhino. The rhino. It's not even a rhino. It's like a fake. Yeah. 
Uh, next question. This one's by Ali Parada. Have you guys seen the seven inch Space Marine that they are selling for 20 bucks and are you guys getting one? Yeah, I have one in my office. That was a gift though, it was a gift uh, for Christmas. It's uh, still in the box, right? No, I took it out. Hmm. You uh, ever planning on painting it? Mm-mm, no, because it's, it's already um, oh, yeah, it's all, the it's, Ultramarines. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah. I if, think if you were to paint it a different color, what? Imperial Fist, probably. Mm-hmm. But I think you can buy the one that you can paint mm-hmm. that comes Just gray. Gray, yeah. yeah. What about you? Would you buy it? Because you don't got know. space for it. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I feel like I'd rather use that money to buy, like, actual stuff for, like, my armies that I'd use. Oh, yeah. Even though 20 bucks, like, what can you buy for 20 bucks at GW now from the miniatures? Like, a, and like I don't even think you can buy most characters. Maybe, like, a blister. Oh, yeah, something. like the ready-to-build ones? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you can't really play on the tabletop? <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, You have another one? Uh, this one's by Bunny Hop. Would a 40k racing game work? Orc wagons racing against Eldar jet bikes against Space Marine land speeders sounds fun. Add in some crazy tracks like the Warp, a Tau Sept, and some Mario-esque power-ups, and bam, Grim Dark Racers is here. If it's like a phone game or um, even a video game, yeah, it could work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's basically Crash Team Racing just with a 40k skin. Yeah. Um... They even have a, a Speed Freak box set that you can buy that has a racing game for the board. Mm. So so you know what we could do? We could buy, like, those racing cars and, like, just take, like, the plastic off and, like, tape it underneath, like, <laughs> those freaking the orc models. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you could just <laughs> use that on the tabletop. That's true. I don't feel like moving all of these orc boys. Let me just run them <laughs> over. Yeah. <laughs> um... We should really take advantage of those types of, of those small box games because mm-hmm. we can use our models inside. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was reading the Dark Heresy book again the other day. Uh, it's I don't think it's supported anymore, but like I was thinking, like this would be awesome to to run a campaign for Dark Heresy with these rules because you're using the models that you already have. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, those were the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you guys so much for listening. And remember, Blay Blade, let it rip. <laughs> this is the Sound Alchemist. Gersh one. And we're out.